blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. shall one have made for my mouth it has commanded and his spirit it has gathered them seek out I said here on Friday when you are poor look for the scriptures that talk of prosperity when you are weak look for the scriptures that talk of strength when you are down, look for the scripture that talk of rise and shine. And when you are poor, look for the scripture that talk of prosperity. Then when you are sick, look for the scripture that says, By his stripes I am healed. He was wounded for my transgression. He was good for my iniquity. The chastisement of our peace were laid on him, and by his stripes I am healed. Surely he has borne our grief. Surely he has carried our sorrow. Somebody say amen. amen. Isaiah said, look for them. Look at it. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read it. No one of these shall fail. Let me hear you say, it will not fail me. When I woke up one night and told mama, early 70s, sit down, poverty died last night. She said, what does that mean? I said, God told me 
Every believer in this town who wants to buy a land can buy. We discuss for several days what it costs to buy land in those days. Land of 100 by 100, 800 naira, 600 naira. But that was when Odianason was receiving 10 pounds. 20 naira to buy a land is impossible. But when you read the word of God, the Bible says, seek ye, look for, search it. If you look for it, you will find it. It says, the just shall live by faith. What does that mean? If I'm justified by his blood, I have a right to determine how I want my life to be. I have right to determine when I need sun. I have the right from God to say, Son, shine. I want to try another I did a research into the height and weight six months of some of the people that came before us in the Bible. Moses weighed 170 pounds. Jesus weighed 180 pounds. He didn't weigh my weight. Jesus was my height in the natural, my God in creation. But he, he, he dealt with elements. He was a God that had power over every creation. And he taught us to subdue the earth. Aren't you glad that the first thing God said when he made man was subdue the earth? That means the earth shall not have dominion over you. Have dominion, have dominion, subdue it. Secret would like to rise above you. Do what to eat. Talk back to me. If you are angry, talk back to me. If you are satisfied, talk back to me. If you are a child of God, talk back to me. Subdue it. Poverty will raise his head. Do what? Fear will raise his head. Do what? Subdue it. Tell fear. Stop harassing me. We dead the whole week of this last week on faith image. A man that has faith image doesn't look at the weather. A man that has faith image withers through weather. Faith is a journey of understanding. God told me to stand. No lion will come here and kill me. God told me to move. No one will push me down. God told me I'm well. Nobody will make me to be sick. God told me I'm blessed. Nobody will curse me. God told me rise up. I will rise and shine. Isn't it amazing that the first law that God gave to man was to subdue everything around him? Subdue. What is God telling you this morning? Be the master of your situation. They terminate your job and throw yourself. They retire you, refire yourself. I like to remind you that what befell you as a child cannot create eternal impediment for the development of your skill and will. In the book of Kings, a little lad or young girl was taken in captivity and taken to the land of Syria. And I'm glad to tell you the Syria of those days is still the Syria of today. The Syrian army conquered her nation and she was captured. In her capture, she was taken as a slave into a foreign land. In that slavery, she was fortunate to be housed in the leader of the war lord called Naaman. The Bible said she stayed as a house slave girl. 
Her body was in captivity. Her life was in captivity. There was one part of her that was not in captivity. Her spirit. You can decide where your soul can go. You can decide how joyful you want to be, how sorrowful you want to be, how defeated you want to be, or how successful you want to be. This little girl stayed in captivity for several years. One day, the man that captured her, in whose house she was a slave, hear me carefully, didn't know that this girl was an observant girl. A girl that has sense of seeing what was happening. One day this girl, out of concern, bearing in mind that she was captured in body but not captured in soul. And I'm glad to tell you the slavery of the soul is worse than the slavery of the flesh. She went to the house mistress and said, ma'am, there's a prophet in my country that can cure your husband. That is the first time the woman knew that her husband's leprosy was already exposed. Maybe you like to take some notes of what I'm going to say so you can take your pen. Up. It's a good thing. The days of Jaga Gongong, Jaga Gongong, Jaga Gongong should be over in the church. Take your pen and write. This girl did not use the love pussy as a mark of mockery. She took it as a challenge of defending whom her God is. Knowing that her nation was conquered, but her life was not conquered. And the madam said, I will tell my husband what you have seen. In several ways, I preach this message telling you that you can find yourself in an unexpected situation but your spirit must always be in an expected state situation and state of mind are two different things your body can be where you never expected but never you allow your spirit to be in a state of unexpected of, your, of, of a state that you didn't expect create the environment of expectancy for yourself Refuse every negative dead drum that surround you night and day. This girl defeated her slavery by taking her soul from slavery and leaving her body in where she was bounded but her spirit free. Over 200 years ago, slave trade was so common in this part of the world. Even last week, did I hear a woman sold her child in India for seven dollars to buy food? But after paying for the food, a relation of her sent her thirty dollars from abroad, and she now went to go and claim the child she sold for seven dollars. And the buyer said no. And out of the fight, give me my child. I will not give you. I paid already. I have my receipt. The police head. And for the destiny of that slave child that was sold, out of her $30 receipt, she paid $7 for which she sold her child, and $3 interest, and recovered the child back. Your destiny is very important this morning. And I want you to consider with me what destiny is. I want to give you some lives of men, politically, economically, socially, sport world, and general life. 200 years plus ago, the slave trade in Africa forced parents and fathers to sell their children. And kings gathered these slaves 
and for common bottle of gin and wrap of tobacco, children were sold to America, to the Scandinavian nations, to the little Caribbean islands, to South and Latin America. Slaves were taken from here and sent abroad. Slaves in the ship, they turned Idemudia to Edward. In the ship, they turned Osadiato to Samuel. In the ship, they gave them the names of the captors and the buyers. And what they did was the slave from Benin, the slave from Wari, the slave from Umbutu, the slave from Lagos, the slave from Ibadan, the slave from I Oyo, were separated so they can lose their language. But there was something not taken from them. Their natural blood was left intact. When they were going, they composed songs on the way. They sang songs that for years and years and years have been the songs of the church and songs of churches. They arrived to their destination. What the slave one didn't know was that even though they were sold, because they don't know what the Bible said that you are bought with a price, they saw it as suffering. But they left this nation. They left Nigeria and the African continent. No visa, no passport, no ticket fare, no ship payment, nothing. They were taken and taken from poor, defeated, poor, naturally, culturally deprived part of the world and taken to a civilized nation like America and out of the nations of America, the Trinidad, the Tobagos, the Jamaican nations emerged out of the farm land that they dropped these slaves. Jamaica today is a territory under the Caribbean, but nationally an African country. Trinidad, an African country. All the little islands, St. Thomas's, and all the little, little nations of the islands of the Caribbean, Bahamas, and so on and so on. More than 300 small little countries are all now economically very viable, opened by slaves. When they got there, their hands were loose from chain. Their lives were loose from chain. And they agreed to free their feet from chain. Out of that very slave known era, nationalists like Marcus Gavi of Jamaica, who became a prime minister, emerged. Blaise Digny emerged. Casey Hartford emerged. And civil rights leader like Martin Luther King Jr. of United States, his grandfather from Edo State here. This may not do you too much good, but I'm telling you that the name you cannot make in your local environment, God can internationalize you. Today, Martin Luther King has a national day observation in America. National holiday. Why? His mouth was not bound. Martin Luther King emerged within the same political circle. Not only Martin Luther, Jesse Jackson also emerged from that era. To the glory of God, many high court judges, many Supreme Court judges, among them is one of my friends who was tried and tested in fire less than 10 years ago. Justice Thomas, his grandfather is a slave from this part of the world. So today, he's a judge of the Federal Supreme Court of the United States of America, sitting among other eight people to take the decision of the destiny of the United States and the world at large. Politically, former slaves who left here have contributed their quota immensely to the political arena of the world. We can name them more than I can list out here who left here as slaves but refused their brain to be enslaved 
and did something active with it, and they came out. What of in the field of economy? In the field of economy, large, you are aware that ninety percent of our petroleum products go to United States every day. Eighty-four percent to be accurate, to be exact. Eighty-four percent of our total oil that is drilled every day is sold to America. We can drill oil. We don't know how to make use of it, so we send it to the country that need it. Our oil is helping America to exist. Nigeria. Africa is contributing to the economic development of our generation. Not only that, in the field of agriculture, our cocos are produced here in sacks and sent back to us as over tin. Our palm oil are sent here in tins and drums and sent back to us as soaps and margarine. We sell them cheap and buy them back expensively. We grow cotton, we don't make materials. We but produce sugar cane, we don't produce sugar. But our economical contribution is helping our generation. We are contributing our little quota, or our big quota, to many parts of our generation. We are no more the slave we used to be. We are now contributors to global economy and global market. And it's time for you to begin to think globally as against your little village of Ugo we are hearing. Let us think of social life. Africans have contributed to the cultural development of diversity of nations, and especially to the United States and the Americas. In the area of music, for instance, the Caribbean music like Calypso, the Jamaican reggae, and the American soul music and dances came from Africa, maybe from Uronigbe and Iguabazua. They were taken from there. Olokunu Renigbe must have been one of those who composed the song. But they took it from cost to blessing. It's not you who sent me here. Look at Miriam Mekaba. Maybe not far away from Igwe Wiobo, where she was born. But thank God today she's a world figure. Our nation, our continent, our world has not forgotten the contribution of our people who refuse to remain in the areas of slavery. In the areas of sports and different games, isn't it amazing and surprising that as early as last year, the Olympic game was held in the United States, in Atlanta. And do you know that six out of every sporting person in America is an of African descendant? In the relay, no other race at all. Africans are enveloped. They run, ziggy, 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 ziggy. In the area of boxing, what we could not do by brain, we do it by our globe. Print was a black man. The man that naturalizes a black man. Your skin is not a deprivation. Your life is not a defeat. The fact that you call yourself black doesn't mean that your eyes are black, your soul is black, your body is black, your spirit is black. Try to whiten yourself. A friend of mine said to me recently, Papa, everywhere I go, they blackmail me. I say, white mail yourself. Don't allow people's opinion pin you down. Lift above the standard of slavery. And I'm glad to tell you that today, Hakim Olajuwon from West here, is an American citizen by right and one of the best basketball players on earth today. Michael Jordan is the number one basketball highest paid player on earth today, a black man. Karim, a black man. Magic Johnson, a black man. These are people who didn't have the opportunity you have now, but they are contributing to the Americas and contributing to the United Nations and contributing to their world. And the young, politically, the mayor that ran Atlanta for more than 10 years was a black man. Think of the several black people. Think of Zeke's contribution to political era in this generation. I don't know how you see yourself. Edit your brain from slavery and focus it on success. Begin to think of something good. Begin to think of something you can do with your life. Begin to think of what you can do with your future. Nearly 60 years ago, 
You have read my life story. I want it as opportune as many of you today. I'm not as privileged as Feb, Ruth, Daisy, and Frida. Our biological children. I'm not sure my father and my mother conceived me on Bono Matras. I'm not sure, and I know for sure, until we grew up, my mother never slept on iron bed. But they gave birth to me in a most unusual way. Born an inferior from interior, all by a superior God. Today, nearly 60 years ago, you have read my life story. I wasn't as opportune as many of you today. I'm not as privileged as Feb, Ruth, Daisy, and Frida, our biological children. I'm not sure my father and my mother conceived me on Vono Matras. I'm not sure, and I know for sure, until we grew up, my mother never slept on iron bed. But they gave birth to me in a most unusual way. Born an inferior from interior, called by a superior God. Today, the entire sixth major continent know who Benson Idahosa is. My world know whom I am. This generation know whom I am. I have contributed more in the area of religion and Christianity than any other black man ever born. I have traveled more than Tutu. I have visited more nations than Tutu. Tutu is blessed to be politically known, but I am glad that I am blessed to be spiritually known. I don't know where you are coming from. Comparing where I came from as a young man in this town, you've heard my story, town without number, I am like Paul, I'm not ashamed to tell you where I'm coming from. When there was no opportunity to go to school by my parents' sponsorship, I pushed shock to go to school. I sold newspapers to go to school. But today, truck and myself, newspaper and myself, what is the difference between you who was born with gold spoon and silver knife and eating with pigs and me who was born among pigs and eating with gold spoon? One must have changed his mind. The Bible says, be not, be not, com be conformed not to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew your mind this morning. I have said all this, I have said to tell you, your destiny is going to have a new beginning. Your life is going to have a new start. God has a program for your life, and you can change your destiny. In the book of Daniel chapter 6, which I want to read briefly, I want you to listen. Daniel was a man captured in slavery. The Bible says in verse 1, He pleased Darius to set over the kingdom, of, kingdom and 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the prince might, might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the president and princess, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the kingdom, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. An excellent spirit. Stand up and say that with me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And the Spirit of God is an excellent spirit. The Spirit of God upon me is an excellent spirit. Say it louder. The Spirit of God is upon me. The Spirit of God upon me is an excellent spirit. Touch your forehead. An excellent spirit is upon me. The Spirit of God upon me is an excellent one. Remove your hand and look at me. Here is Daniel in the land of slavery. Selection was done by choice of the best in the nation. Of the 120 provinces, princes were rulers. Daniel that came from slavery background was among those that were selected. And the Bible says, out of the 120 princes, Three presidents were selected, and of the three, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. One was preferred above the rest. Oh, today God is selecting people. It's your turn to be selected above the rest. It's your turn to be made a somebody out of our nobody. God has a plan for your life. 
God has a future for your family. You can as well become the Joseph that God has prepared. That through you, your family destiny will be changed. Don't religiously relegate yourself. Don't let the things of this world clamor your brain. Don't allow yourself to be chained down and bogged down and tied down and hewed down because you think your family didn't make it, you cannot make it. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has not changed. He took Joseph from the pit. He sent him to the palace. In the palace, he made him the governor of the nation. He was brought into captivity as the governor general. And the central bank signatory, the first man to sign the check in Egypt, his picture was in the occurrence of Joseph of the Jews, but governor of the nation. It is no secret what God can do. I don't know where you are coming from, but I know where you are going. And he who holds your hand has never failed anyone before. It's your turn for your star to shine. Stop talking about your failure. Stop talking about your past. Thank God for the song the choir sang. Where you are coming from is not as important as where you are going. If I had looked at my life from where I started, I wouldn't walk in the street of Beni. Most of the women I carry plantain for, from Upper Market, from Agbado Market, Isuwa Market wasn't there then. New Benin Market wasn't there then. The people I have to say they are wares. They are today looking at me as an amazing wonder. Why? I turn my head around. Why? I change my mind. Every man or woman that succeeded in the Bible had a change of mind. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? When God mold your life, people don't care where you are coming from. They want to know where you are now. Are you ashamed of your background? No. Once you become our, nobody know you are born in Ikene. Once you become Z, nobody know you are born in Onisha. You become a figure of your continent. Try to change your mind today, and God will change your future. Amen. Put your right hand on your chest. Holy Spirit. You told me last night to challenge them to new belief. That only themselves can free themselves from slavery. Oh God, how excellent is thy name. How excellent is your name. When Daniel was captured, he never knew he was going to a place to reign. Lord God, how we find ourselves where we are now, we don't know. But we know you who hold our hands. Lift your right hand up. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. Oh, to Him, I pray. This message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 
100 million people. The message continues after this video about anointed you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Brother and one more time. Oh, I surrender. our Prince of Peace, our King of Glory. Let's lift our hand before God. Whosoever you are, wherever you are, raise your two hands. Take these hands, O oh God. Give us new direction. Give us new direction. Even if we are going the wrong way, bring us back to the right path. Help us to follow your way and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord. We give you this hand not to withdraw it from you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands down. Church of God Mission International Incorporated Benin City, Nigeria. For further details, prayers, and counseling, write Bishop Margaret Idahoso, Box 60, or PMB 1514, Benin City, Nigeria. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God.
preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. It also is a man that believes with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God uh, like his son, we see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature, a man who reached out to everyone, the high and the low in society, a man who rubbed shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. Uh, it, it's a blessing, and it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyedepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbenidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told, in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. 
and the first day of the crusade a truck load of soldiers came the man of faith the man of prayer the man of courage the man of peace and archbishop mounted the platform and and the soldiers came with their guns when archbishop started preaching they all put their guns down when he made the altar call they all raised their hands to receive jesus as lord and personal savior and we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye opener for us and right there i decided i needed to go and know more from this man fortunately he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend bible school in benin or nation for christ bible institute and so that particular year i uh, requested i wrote and fortunately i was invited to come so uh, we went to nigeria to begin uh, my class actually i went there 79 my class started in 1980 and uh, we went through the bible training and it was powerful we were all charged up he started uh, the word of faith schools he started the christian hospital faith mediplex he started Benson Ida Hoja University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore flew to New York and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are, and it's raining cats and dogs. What do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would move, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idausa. He would say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down five minutes time. The pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were on the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there. You can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? 
because I was afraid. Can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Ebenedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God, could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one-on-one, -on -one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where Nobody wants to go, or everybody feared to go. It was a man that believed in venturing where others feared to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. It also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors." It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Idahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife 
of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And, and one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's up? What's up? What's up? And he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He say, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, he, please, I beg you. Don't, don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, Behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I beg, what did I talk? Again? Again, again! Hey! Benson. You mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? What you say I can do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was, she, she was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, listen. This baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why, why, he, why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate. And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child, I will lift up be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? What's the girl's name? I say it's Inwarata. I'm a living testimony. 
I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world knows about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Ben Sinidahosa. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried to can raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life? My father said, yes. He said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, we God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. That is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock sneezed. Yes. Another day back to me, after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Then he said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power superpower then i wasn't a child of god my mother used to serve um, she was a princess of olokun shango and all that and i said oh, the, the the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power so the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now and 
I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there was, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today and my life. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, 
prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I'd like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a company where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. 
A leader took correspondence calls from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following, said the voice from heaven. The room was filled with the presence of God as Benson fell to his knees before the Lord. Wherever you want me to go, I will go. He prayed through the night, renewing his vows to God and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation. After his call, Benson launched into ministry, work preaching from village to village. The gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing, more people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also President of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, President of Idaosa World Outreach, and President of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bish of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981, from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He walked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa. According to Mrs. Gordon Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA, I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, 
where he often appear on national religious telecasts. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrates is a, a, a demonstrate he is especially called of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people, said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981. His Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion, whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people, both in the gospel ministry and other faith of human endeavors. And he applied the principles he learned, he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry. He was very energetic, hardworking. One of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa. He was committed and consistent, and he had confidence in himself. He was very humble and full of godly wisdom. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998. 
Now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again. As a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry. He began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establish, establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Benson Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quote, quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your your attitude determines your altitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ray Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, Word of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E.F.B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube, and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts, get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.